All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All right, got the T-shirt, got the CD. Here it is, Sunstorm Brothers in Arms featuring Ronnie Romero, who replaced JoLynn Turner. <laughs> and uh, again, one of my favorite songs on this record is called Back My Dreams. Kind of sounds like something Vandenberg would have done. And uh, just a really cool album. Ronnie Romero is the guy in the middle. And now he's kind of upset that uh, JoLynn Turner does not like um, the fact that, you know, Richie Blackmore basically passed on a more authentic rainbow lineup. Uh, Ronnie Romero is in this version of rainbow and they're doing uh, both Deep Purple and Rainbow songs and maybe even some Ronnie James Dio era material. I don't know if they're doing the Graham Bonnet era material. Um, you know what? This is just, it gets a little bit tedious, but I guess it's something to talk about, right? So again, Joe Lynn Turner out there kind of bashing Richie Blackmore, uh, those two guys obviously have pretty good size egos. And I think Ronnie Romero ends up being like the odd man out here because he is a really great vocalist. I mean, go and listen to this, listen to some other uh, stuff that Ronnie has done. And he's a younger guy. He's got a lot of gas in the tank still. He's kind of a charismatic front man. I don't think he's the greatest singer that's ever been, right? But he is a really strong singer. He brings a different style to this to some degree. I don't think he sounds like Joe Lynn Turner. Um, maybe he sounds a little bit more like Graham Bonnet. I, I don't know, but you'd have to go listen to it. I think maybe Dio more than anybody else, right? So that's kind of cool. If you're going to sing any of the uh, Ronnie James Dio material, <laughs> you'd want a guy that kind of sounds like him. Um, you know, there are some other guys. I think, uh, there's a guy by the name of Diego Valdez who sounds a lot like Ronnie James Dio anyway, just throwing it out there. Um, so this is what, uh, Jolyn Turner says about this rainbow thing that was supposed to happen with him. He says, I tried to do that already, meaning trying to get rainbow together with, the surviving members for special shows and festivals and so forth. Um, he says, before Blackmore did the reunion, you know, that reunion, quote unquote, call it what you want. We were in discussions about having everybody that was in Rainbow together for an extravaganza. I mean, anybody who was still alive and even paying tribute to Ronnie James Dio and everything and trying to get them all in one place at one time to do a show, a two and a half hour show, an authentic rainbow reunion. And it just got squashed by his management and everything else. And this is a fact, this is a reality now that you're dealing with organizations. It's not like he called up Richie Blackmore. What he did was he contacted his people, contacted Blackmore's people, and they talked and Blackmore's people shot it down. So he says here, um, Live Nation, he had Live Nation involved. He had a documentary company, a 3D documentary uh, that would have been like the Guns N' Roses thing. Um, the dude's name is Barry Summers, who was involved in that. He's a good friend of mine and it just fell on deaf ears. So it sounded like, or it sounds like here that Richie Blackmore had no interest in all this stuff that Joe Lynn Turner was planning behind the scenes. He had, you know, live concert, 3D documentary lined up. Anybody who was anybody, right, in Rainbow was supposed to be there. Um, he basically said that, you know, the whole thing just is kind of like Blackmore's night with a new singer. That's what it is. Now, he continued, there's a lot of people that love Rainbow, but they were too young to go to the concerts or never saw them live. And this would have been the chance for those people. 
And I have a lot of people in my own family like this that wanted to go see Rainbow, but really never got to see it. Um, and he says, I've already said it's a cheap imitation, a weak, cheap imitation of Rainbow. So Ronnie Romero took to Instagram. <laughs> Ronnie's not happy. And he included the following message. There is so much power in our words when we are a public person that we must be careful what we say. I don't know and I don't care what's between the main man and some old ex-members of the band or whatever happened. I'm just a normal guy who one day received the call from one of his idols to sing in the band he always dreamed of singing in. That's it. I'm pretty convinced I did my job well. And he mentions all the other guys who were part of the Rainbow reunion. And um, he says, I get love every place I go. I know as well, you cannot be liked by everybody, but I will not tolerate somebody who's calling my work cheap. No, sir. Maybe for some guys, it's time to move on as he did with other issues in his life. I think he's talking about the wig, which by the way, I just saw a performance with Jolyn Turner recently and he's got the wig on. So not sure if he completely moved on yet or he's only comfortable kind of doing it here and there. I don't know. That's fine. I think it's really courageous what he did. He says at the end... This is all about music. That's the only thing that counts and matters. Um, so that's uh, Ronnie Romero, who in a way took the high road, even though he you know, kind of smacked Jolyn Turner around and saying uh, things like, hey, maybe you should move on. Folks, this is a syndrome that I think is going to continue with the older guys who were there at the beginning and they believe they deserve respect, right? whether it's Lou Graham, Jolyn Turner, whoever it is who's still out there. You know who handled this really well? I think um, way after the fact, not you know for maybe 10 or 15 years, is Steve Perry, because he went to the Hall of Fame. He said that Arnell sings his heart out every night. He was never critical of Arnell. He doesn't go around saying Journey is a cheap imitation. He probably could do that and people would flock to him, but then there'd be this huge feud between himself and Neil Sean, which again, would generate a lot of back and forth, a lot of interest uh, in that situation. But I think taking the high road, uh, especially when you're being financially compensated for everything the band does, um, is the right is the right thing to do. In this case, I just don't think the players are big enough, right? I'm I'm just being honest. As much as I love this music, um, I don't think it's popular enough to start this kind of feud between an old guy and a younger guy. I think, like Ronnie Romero says, he got the phone call uh, from Blackmore. He said, "Yep." I want to and and give Richie Blackmore a lot of credit for picking really good talent, much like Neil Sean picked Arnell Pineda. And there are going to be people who disagree with that, right? They're going to say, no, you know, he should have picked this guy or Perry should have came back or I don't know why they replaced Joe Lynn Turner. Same reason, by the way, in this project, um, according to the record label, they wanted Turner. Uh, they reached out to him and he didn't want to do this anymore. So now Ronnie Romero has been with this for two albums. And I think, again, the results are pretty impressive. And that's why I figured I'd talk about this while I'm talking about Rainbow and uh, Deep Purple and Jolyn Turner and Ronnie James Dio and all that stuff. I mean, Ronnie Romero could sing Dio stuff all day long. I mean, all day long. And he has a very distinctive and somewhat different voice from the other rainbow guys, but he still fits that, you know, that, that genre and that mold almost perfectly. And I don't know, I guess you can get resentful once you get older thinking, okay, maybe I'm washed up and they hired the younger guy who can do this better than me. I mean, Joel and Turner still sounds good. I watched 
some of the concert. He was still wearing the wig. And um, I don't know if it's recent or it was before he said uh, he was ditching the wig. I, d I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but he sounds really good. And, you know, he probably could have kept going with the Sunstorm stuff. I don't think anybody was making a lot of money on it. And I think that might have been the rationale for it. But then to turn around and say, well, you know, they didn't ask me. These are guys with egos, right? A lot of guys with egos. And they should say, look, um, maybe it is time for me to move on. Peter Cetera, the most graceful departure ever from the music scene, said, look, I'm getting old. I don't want to sound ridiculous if I go out there and people uh, remember me for that kind of performance. In the case of Turner, I think he's still good, but there's no question that um, Ronnie Romero is really good and he's in his prime. So um, it's too bad because you should have had a succession, right? This music could have continued, like I always say. Um, now we're fighting over scraps on the table. Rainbow, right? Not the biggest band in history, but a band that a lot of people enjoy. So here's the thing. If you like Rainbow, you should check out Sunstorm. This is brand new music, courtesy of Frontiers Music, featuring the aforementioned Ronnie Romero there in the middle. And uh, my friend Alessandro Del Vecchio, who writes all of this material and plays keyboards, all kinds of great keyboard sounds on this record. Um, good for running, according to one of the patrons on my channel. You can go running to Sunstorm and uh, get a good workout. So there you have it, folks. The drama between Jolyn Turner and Ronnie Romero, who has uh, done really well. And I don't think he's a cheap imitation. He might be an imitation, right? But he isn't cheap. Let's look at it that way. I think that's appropriate.